Welcome to the 2023-24 MISHA Basketball Instructional and Training Video. I'm Kenny Seifert, the Coordinator of Basketball Officiating. It is my pleasure to serve the game of basketball and work with the officiating community. I'm excited to provide these videos to all of the officials and coaches. During this instructional video, we will review plays from this past season along with the current season. We will look at how the new rules or interpretations will impact how the game is officiated. I am responsible for the script and the plays selected in this video. Please note that no attempt is made to embarrass any institution, coach, student athlete, or official. These clips are being used for the purpose of making officiating better. The goal of this instructional video is to develop a style of officiating that will result in a consistent enforcement of the rules during the regular and postseason ploy. In addition, it is our hope that the coaches will utilize these videos as a tool to assist them in their teachings of the student athletes. It is all of the stakeholders desire to have the same play officiated the same way, no matter what conference, league, geographic area of the state the game is located, or what time of the season the game is being played. We will continue this effort throughout the season with periodic video bulletins sent to all basketball officials and coaches via email and also posted on the MISHA website. Please remember that all of these videos, including the last couple of years, are available to you on the MISHA website. I hope that you will make it a habit to review these videos regularly and often. It is very important to begin this instructional video by acknowledging and congratulating all of the officials, mechanics clinicians, rules interpreters, and observers on a job well done last season. Lastly, I want to personally thank the Basketball Video Committee for their time, compassion, and expertise in making these videos a possibility. I would like to share with you some basketball officiating philosophy. While a thorough knowledge of the rules is important, it is not enough to guarantee the competency of an official. There are other attributes which are equally important. Officials must possess a combination of these if they are to fulfill their duties adequately. In addition to a complete mastery of the rules, Officials must have a good knowledge of human nature and the ability to control situations as they arise. Officials must have a basketball sense which supersedes the technical application of the rules so that the game goes smoothly. Officials are expected to exercise good judgment in applying the rules. As we now move into a new and exciting season, we need to make sure that we not only continue to enforce the rules that we have so diligently mastered over the past several seasons, but openly embrace any new rules for the 2023-24 campaign, along with the points of emphasis covered in the face-to-face -face rules meetings or the online rules review. Let's touch up on several plays and make sure we have a good understanding and the expectations of how to officiate them. In our video today, we're going to cover multiple plays coming from two disciplines, hand check body bumping and freedom of movement. Keep in mind, that the game of basketball is predicated on the freedom of movement. It is not legal to use hands on an opponent, which in any way inhibits the freedom of movement of the opponent or acts as an aid to a player in starting or stopping. This includes with the ball and without the ball. Also, it is not legal to extend the arms fully or partially in a position other than the vertical so that the freedom of movement of an opponent is hindered when contact with the arms occurs. On this possession, number 12 in black is playing some outstanding defense. However, as number 2 in white attempts to cut off of the screen set at the top of the key, number 12 in black extends his arms and holds the cutter, therefore impeding his freedom of movement. Even if only for a moment, this illegal action is enough for number 12 in black to maintain his defensive position and prohibits number 2 from making the basket cut he desired. As number 23 in white attempts to make a cut off of a back screen, number 4 in black impedes her freedom of movement by stepping forward and using her body to chuck the cutter. This action is illegal and should be penalized. Number 14 in white has the right to freely move down the court without being restricted. Number 21 in purple uses his hands, arms, and body to inhibit number 14's freedom of movement. Unfortunately, when we miss the initial illegal action, we sometimes catch the retaliatory action, as we did on this play on number 14 in white. Since the trail official had the ball handler matchup, the center official had a much better angle and look at this play, along with it being in his primary coverage area. Number 25 in white 
is attempting to set a cross screen in the post for her teammate. As she moves into the paint area, number 21 in red extends her arms, holds, and restricts number 25. When defensive players extend their arms horizontally towards their opponent, it is usually an indicator of holding, grabbing, or restricting their ability to freely move. Since the center official has a competitive matchup directly in front of him, the lead official must have a look on this action. Outstanding officiating by both the trail and center officials for having whistles on this illegal action. Number one in white's leg extension and arm hold impedes number two in red's ability to make a basketball move to get open. On another note, not sure where the trail official is on this free throw attempt. Where the official needs to be is at the 28 foot mark near the sideline and assists both the lead and the center. We clearly have a lane violation that was missed. It is imperative that all three officials are at the correct locations on free throws and officiating with a purpose. Illegal hands and no landing spot. Too much contact on this play not to have a whistle. Number 20 in purple must be afforded an opportunity for a landing spot and time and distance to avoid any contact after he catches the pass. In addition, the extension of white number one's arms and hands into the torso area of his opponent is impeding and restricting his ability to catch and make a move. The lead official has a good look at this play and needs to have a whistle. As number 23 in black changes direction with a between the legs dribble and attempts to drive to the middle of the floor, number two in white makes illegal contact by extending her arms. This hand check impeded number 23's progress towards the basket, resulting in a proper foul call by the center official. Nicely done. It is late in the game. Purple has a four point lead, is playing a little keep away, and is forcing the team in white to chase them. These situations will usually result in officials having to make decisions as to the tolerance level for illegal contact. Right here, number 12 in white extends her arms on number zero in purple. However, the contact is very minimal, and after the initial touch, she immediately removes her hands. Not only is the contact minimal, it did not affect the dribbler's rhythm, speed, balance, or quickness. Good officiating by not penalizing the defender on this play. However, a little later in the same possession, the same two players are involved in yet another decision for the official to make. The difference the second time around is the extension of the arms and hands resulted in this contact affecting the rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness of zero. Center official is right on top of the play and in great position to make this call for an illegal hand check. Was there an enormous amount of contact by number one in green on this play? No. Did the contact with the body affect the ball handler's rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness? Absolutely it did. Additionally, although number one in green had established legal guarding position and has the right to move laterally or obliquely to maintain that position, he cannot move towards the opponent. Prior to the contact, number one in green, while moving obliquely, steps towards the ball handler as contact is made. Outstanding call by the center official for allowing the play to start, develop, and finish prior to having a whistle on this illegal body bump. Before we discuss the illegal action on this play, I want to recognize the outstanding legal screen being set by number three in white. Now back to the play. As the ball handler dribbles off the screen, Defender number five jumps out into the path and makes body contact that knocks number zero and white off balance along with dislodging the ball. This body bump foul is illegal. Compliments to the trail official on being in great position to make this call. Watch as number two in blue advances the ball down the court. First, number four in white extends his arms into the body of the ball handler. Hand check. Then, as number two crosses half court, we have a hand check and body bump. These illegal actions restrict an offensive player's ability to maneuver and places them at a disadvantage. Appreciate the trail official staying with the play and ultimately having a whistle. Number 23 in white extends his right arm into the body and makes contact on number 15 in blue, 
as he attempts to drive baseline side to the basket. Great patience and mechanics by the trail official as he watched this play start, develop, and finish prior to blowing his whistle. Job well done. Outstanding defense by all five players of the red team on this possession. However, number four got a little over-aggressive and attempted to steal the dribble away from number 22 in white as she was making her move towards the center of the court. Too much arm and body contact on this play to not have a foul. Since the trail official was straight line from getting a good look at the contact, the center official stepped in with a patient whistle and made the call. Great teamwork by the officiating crew. I hope you have found this first instructional video on freedom of movement and hand check body bumping to be informative and helpful. Officials, do not hesitate to blow the whistle on illegal actions that places the opponent at a disadvantage. Good luck with the beginning of the season.